Okay, so um, I have been asked to kind of go over some of these practice problems uh, with a little bit of a tutorial on how to get started. So I'm going to try to break these down a little bit for you um, with some clues as to how to read the questions and then decide where to go from there. So for number one, this tells you it is a buffer solution. So if it doesn't say that it's a buffer solution, what you want to do is you want to look at your two components. So this HCN and NACN, this is an acid and this has CN minus and that is the conjugate base. So when we have an acid, a conjugate base, a buffer, and a Ka, you can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So pH equals pKa plus the log base over acid. That's how most of these on this first page are going to be. Now here, I don't tell you that it's a buffer. It just says there's a solution. So look here, NH3, you should know that that's a base. This one here, NH4 plus, that would be the conjugate acid. Same thing, Henderson Hasselbalch. Now, when, you, when you've got these salts, you have to, to make sure, and I'm not going to try to do any trick questions, but the, Na, the sodium doesn't matter because it is the conjugate of a strong base, so it has no salt pH properties. Chloride, that's the conjugate base of the strong acid, hydrochloric acid. It does not have any uh, pH properties. So the NH4 does. So that's the conjugate acid. There's the base, Henderson Hasselbalch again. Next one. This is a solution. This I fixed it um, on the file. Uh, this should be um, acetic acid. H3O2. I have updated that. Um, I'll make sure that everybody knows. So again, this is the acid. This is the conjugate base. You got to know what it, remember what the acids and bases are. The acids, proton donors, bases, proton acceptors. There's a Ka value, Henderson Hasselbalch, pH equals pKa plus log of base over acid again. Or you can just do an ice table. You will get the same answer. Next, this one here tells you that 25.5 grams of, this is sodium acetate, C2H3O2, is added to a solution of, see this is how I told you, you got to recognize these organic acid groups. So here's the acid, this here is the conjugate base. Now, in this time, here's a concentration. This does not give you the concentration. So first thing you need to do is you need to calculate the concentration of sodium acetate. So calculate the concentration of the sodium acetate. I'm going to assume you know how to do that. You want to get that in molarity. Um, at this point, you should know how to do that. Once you get concentrations, you've identified your acid, you've identified your conjugate base, Henderson Hasselbalch again. Now, this one here, you're using the same information, so it tells you it's a buffer, and we're going to add some hydroxide solid. We're not going to change the volume, so that's helpful. So this one, you have to do the two-part calculation. So the first one, you have to do your stoichiometry calculation, and then you have to do um, Henderson Hasselbalch. So the stoichiometry calculation, that's the one that looks like the ice table, but it's really not. So that's where you have, and you do everything in moles or um, millimoles, but here it's moles, so we can just do moles for that. So you have the number of moles before you add, um, what you add, and then after the addition, keep the concentrations um, the same there, so your final volume will still be 500 milliliters. Then you use Henderson Hasselbalch um, for that one. So this is like the precursor that we did to the titrations. Page. 
this goes with it. What happens to the pH when we add HCl? Same process, only instead of adding OH, we're going to be adding H+. So, same thing, you're going to want to do your stoichiometry, your stoichiometry, then you're going to want to do either your um, ICE or your Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Um, if you look on your handout, if you need to refer back to your notes here, it's on page three, calculating pH changes in a buffer. You do your stoichiometry calculation, then your equilibrium. And so then the examples of that were right after there. So um, when you add OH, remember to subtract to get pH, um, pH is a little bit easier. So make sure you set up, this is in moles, that's important. All right, next. This says, what is the concentration of the hydronium ion? Okay, so let's look at the information that we're given. This is sodium acetate. That's gonna be a conjugate base. That's acetic acid. There's the acid. So we know we're going to have a buffer. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna use Henderson-Hasselbalch to get, and that's gonna give you the pH. Next, once you have the pH, then you know that pH equals negative log concentration H3O plus. So solve that, so that's a two-step question. Uh, creating a buffer uh, with pH of 7.5, this, uh, first thing you have to do is you want to create a buffer. So that's this, this is the first question. And then there's a second question. So which one is close enough to get uh, to buffer at 7.35? Now, it says what mass of the sodium salts of one of these solutions is going to be needing to make the buffer. Remember here that buffers are most effective when the concentration of the acid equals the concentration um, of the base or the conjugate base, whatever. Okay, so it tells you you have this much, this many moles, so you probably need, so you want to make um, a solution of whichever one you choose to the same molarity and it wants you to get um, the mass so you're going to have to figure out what molarity you need use um, molar mass use volume and you can calculate um, grams from the periodic table next all right this is a titration so the first thing you want to do here is you want to identify what we're titrating. CH3NH2, well, I'm not sure what that is. When I first read it, I know what it is. But it's titrated with 1.5 molar HBr. All right, well, I know that HBr is a strong acid. So that means this is some sort of base. Since it's not on my list of strong bases, it's a weak base. If you're not sure, it tells you that there is KB. So the first thing you want to do with the um, initial pH is you want to do this just like an ice table. Solve for OH and then either use KW or subtraction to get pH. So remember when you're dealing with KBs, what that means. So you've got to, so the initial pH, that means no HBr has been added yet. So you only have this, so you're gonna have to write your um, dissociation equation. 
how it's going to react with water, and then you're going to need the ice table, standard equilibrium um, calculation. How much HBr do you need to get to equivalence? That you're going to need to write an equation, and that's going to be the acid base equation and then you're just going to do a stoichiometry um, calculation using factor label method. Um, pH at 50% neutralization, so that is also known as half equivalence. Look at the notes and know what happens at pH and half equivalence. There's a shortcut. What is the pH at equivalence? Here you're going to have to do um, the before, the adding, the after, and you figure out what's left, then you do, so this is, this is your stoichiometry. You want to do that in millimoles most of the time, because you have millimoles and milliliters, the millis will cancel out. So you do that. And then you're going to do your equilibrium to get your standard um, concentration of H plus or OH, depending on what you have left over. So now we're going to go in, we're going to start adding different amounts of the acid. Same thing here, you're going to have to do your stoichiometry, then you're going to have to do your equilibrium. Make sure you're, you're doing your stoichiometry in millimoles. So that would be milliliters times your molarity. That's gonna give you millimoles. Don't forget on these, when you calculate your new concentrations, you need to take into account the total volume that you've added. So here we've added five, five milliliters of HBr to our beginning amount of 25 milliliters of solution. So that's going to be 30 milliliters. Make sure you take that into account. Number eight, this is the same kind of situation. I took out this C, I've, I've updated that as well. Um, same thing, in this case here, we have um, a weak acid. And this here, this is a strong base. So you're going to go through the same sort of process, only instead of KBs, you have KAs. Hopefully that's helpful. All right, molar, molar solubility and these types of uh, deposits, we'll continue to go over those today. Um, the first thing you want to do for these is you want to write your dissociation equation. So split it apart into its ions. So write your dissociation equation. After you write your dissociation equation, um, then you're gonna wanna write your equilibrium expression. Then you're gonna make um, an ice table and you're going to, but in, for your ice table, instead of using X, you're going to use S's, S for solubility, representing molar solubility. And then you're going to solve for S um, using your solubility product constant. So it's just an equilibrium calculation. All right, so here, this says it deposits from water. What mass is in five liters of water that is saturated with this? So this is based off of a molar solubility. So the first thing you want to do is you want to calculate using these steps um, molar solubility. So when you calculate molar solubility, then you take your volume, so it's going to be S times the volume, that's going to get you moles, and then you're going to use molar mass 
from the periodic table. This is going the other direction. It gives you molar solubility. You want to calculate KSP. So first thing you have to do is you write your dissociation equation. And then you write your equilibrium expression. After you write your equilibrium expression, plug and chug. Plug into in order to figure out KSP. Plug into your equilibrium expression. All right. Next, this is a molar solubility, but we already have some salt solution. So you're going to write your equation. So your dissociation equation. And um, after you do that, Make sure I tell you the right thing. Um, you start, you're, you're going to make, uh, make your um, ice table. Make sure you put in your initial value there, and then it's just solve for S. Solve for S. We'll go over this in class today, how to determine if it's gonna be more soluble in acidic or if it's in a neutral solution. That depends on, you have to look at um, the concentrations of, uh, or the, the properties of these salts here. Um, what's an acid, what's a conjugate base, what has acid-based properties of salts or, or solution. So you need to make sure you know how to do that. Uh, these we're gonna go over in class today. Here is does a precipitate form. This is giving you concentrations and concentrations. Um, so whenever you do that, you this is, this is a Q versus K situation. So here you're going to write your um, dissociation equation, only you're going to write it the other way. So um, write your equation for what you're forming for the precipitate. Oh, so you can, you can call it a precipitation equation. Calculate Q, compare it to K. If Q is greater than K, you do get um, a soluble product. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, that should at least get you started.